It's Hockey Night in Canada. What a great, great feeling. What a wonderful sense of cheer and enjoyment and of confidence. Oh, there's something you're aware of. Your car's been taken care of. That's the S.O. sign of confidence. That's a happy motoring sign. Imperial Oil, on behalf of S.O. dealers and agents everywhere in Canada, bring you the seventh game in the Stanley Cup semifinals between the Boston Bruins and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Direct from the Boston Garden in Boston. And here are Foster and Bill Hewitt. We welcome the television audience coast to coast. The score is tied 1-1. Toronto Maple Leafs 1, Boston Bruins 1 here in Boston. And we're waiting for the two teams to return to the ice for the start of the second period. The referee is Eddie Powers who has replaced Red Story, who was to referee this game, but Red Story resigned before the game, and so Eddie Powers has filled in the breach. Ten penalties handed out in a fiery first period, five apiece. The Leafs outshot Boston 10-5. to five. The Leafs are coming on the ice now, wearing their dark blue uniforms, and they'll be to our left for the second period. Boston scored in the first two minutes of play when Mahovlich went off for slashing in 21 seconds. There's Bond coming on the ice. He was the battler in the big fight. Stasiak scored from Morrison at 111, and Stasiak had been in alone himself. Here come the Bruins. Led by Lumley. They've got Moons in the lineup, all their stalwarts. So they're shooting the works, slamming out there too. And Tapazzini, all injured players. Vaughn is out there for the Leafs, and Regan with a broken hand. And Regan was the Leaf player who tied it up. Regan from Harrison Duff at 5.33 when the Bruins were shorthanded, when Lumley, the goalkeeper, was given an interference penalty, and it was served by Poliziani, the rookie for the Bruins. Leaves to our left, Boston to our right, a 1-1 tie. Stasiak from Morrison with Mahovlich off, and Regan from Harrison Duff while Lumley was off. And they're all set to go, and for the play-by-play, -play, here's Bill Hewitt. All set to start the second period. The puck is dropped. Leafs are playing a man short, and the puck is shot back into the Boston zone. Lumley goes out of his net to stop it. And leaves it there for Moans. Moans working under difficulty. A pass to Stasiak. Stopped by Stanley. Stanley knocked it high in the air with a high stick. And play is called. Horvath, Stasiak, Busick. Flamin and Moans. Fulford, Stewart, Horton, and Stanley for the Toronto Maple Leafs. They're lining up for the face-off. The puck comes back to the ruined defense and back for it. Number 19, Moans. A pass to Flamin, out to Busick. Number nine, up over the leaf line. A pass to Stasiak. Back to Moans. Moans into Busick and Horton sprawling in front to cover up. Hofford failed to get the puck out. It's shot and Bauer made a nice save on that try. Stasiak. Passed it, and Horva and Mahavlich intercepted, and the puck went out. Busick will try his luck. Number nine hit Fulford, and the Leafs clear the puck out to center ice. Busick bumped by Fulford. Here's Stewart coming over the line. He missed the check from Flamin, and Mahavlich stays out on the ice as Horton nearly lost the puck to Busick. Offside at the Maple Leaf blue line. And that's where play ends. In that first period, which was extremely hard fought, and the Bruins had the advantage in the early part, but the Leafs came right back. There was one big fight on the ice, a near fight right at the end of the period, and there were numerous fights in the crowd all during the first period, and a lot of stuff, as usual, was thrown on the ice to delay the game. So 1-1 one, one tie after a minute and 10 seconds of the second period. From the faceoff, the puck is cleared into the Boston zone. Boyvin goes back for it. Boyvin is partially stopped. Tapazzini cleared past.
Lewis went to center ice, and Vaughn of the Leafs has it. Vaughn shot the puck into the Boston zone. Armstrong clears to McKell, stopped by Duff. Back to Vaughn. Vaughn to Regan. Regan turns around at center, gets away from Armstrong, gets over the line, pass it right in front to Duff. Duff shoots, and he shot wide. Regan right in front of Duff, he shoots. Oh, hit lovely right in the face. Duff has it again for the Leafs. Trying to get it in front. Still has it. Shot it. Lost it. And McKinney comes down over the line for Boston into the Leaf zone. McKinney pushed over by Brewer. Regan has it. Ahead to Armstrong at center. Armstrong shoots one. Lumley's bleeding badly in the mouth. A shot and it's caught. Lumley's been cut in the mouth. Lumley is headed to the dressing room for repairs. He's ble bleeding very freely. There's Lumley there. He hit, uh, he was very fortunate on that last shot by Duff when, or not so fortunate that it hit his face, but as far as saving a goal was concerned, Lumley's gone to the dressing room for repairs. And it was that kind of a save. He didn't even see it. It hit his mouth and cut him. But he didn't realize it gave him such a wallop. He was stunned by the impact of the drive. But if it hadn't hit him in the face, it would have gone in the net. Just after that, he juggled one that came very close to going into the corner. So the game will be held up while Lumley is being patched up. He's cut in the mouth. And it was from that shot that he inadvertently got in the way of. But fortunately for him, he stopped the puck from going in the net, but got a bad cut or certainly is bleeding very freely from the mouth as he left the ice. The Bruins are just skating around. The Leafs are skating around at their own end. It's a 1-1 tie. Stasiak scored the first goal of the game from Morrison when Mahovlich was off for slashing in 21 seconds. The goal was scored at 1-11. Topazzini had a breakaway for the Bruins when Boyvan next went off at 2-14 but he missed with the shot to the corner after Bauer made him made the move first. Then, with Lumley's penalty being served at 4.17, Regan tied it up with Harrison Duff at 5.33. Then there were a series of penalties after that. Of course, the big fight of the first period was between Vaughn, Eamon, Stasiak, and Flamin. But basically, there were only really three in the fight, Vaughn, Stasiak, and Flamin. Vaughn fought the two of them, and just prior to the start of the fight, Harris was clipped on the jaw by Stasiak, who let go a beautiful right hand. Harris went down as if he had been poleaxed, but he got up quickly, but he didn't have a chance to get in the fight as Vaughn took over for him, and he handled fairly evenly with both getting in good punches, both Flamin and Stasiak in turn, and sometimes the two of them together. It threatened to break out into a regular free-for-all. It spread into the crowd where there were fights in various parts of the Boston Garden here, but they seem to keep those fights in the crowd fairly well under control. They broke out in the corner and at the back of the Boston bench. Then when the two teams were just about ready to leave the ice at the end of the first period, a near free-for-all started in front of the Maple Leaf net with McKell and Vaughn and a few others being right around there, ready to go at it again, but they cooled out just in time. So the first peri period ended, a 1-1 tie. The Leafs outshot Boston 10-5. to There were 10 penalties, five apiece. Although Morrison also got a 10-minute misconduct as a result of the uh, of shooting the puck against the boards. And now Wes and Gordy Howe. Well, 
Well, here we have uh, with us in the Boston Garden and an impromptu sort of intermission, the uh, one of the all-time greats of hockey, the outstanding star of the Detroit Red Wings, Gordy Howe. Gordy, what do you think of that uh, play up to now? Well, first of all, thank you. <laughs> a fine comment. But uh, the only thing I can say, like I said before, those penalties, you know, they I think they hurt their game to a certain extent because uh, it hinders an individual's play when they have to play it nice and cozy and fight off those two minutes. But uh, I'd say the fellow who's not feeling too cozy right now would be Don Simmons. I was talking to Don over in Toronto, and he told me he wasn't feeling that well, although he will be pressing the service has something radically wrong with uh, Mr. Lumley and he said like he said it's nervous watching he said but if I had to go into a game now at a crucial point he said I think I'd die so I'm feeling for Don Simmons and Lum right now. I think perhaps Lum will be back though don't you? Oh uh, old fire horse and competitor he'll be back he could lose half a lip and still be back up there. That was quite a shot. It bounced off his chest and right up onto his mouth. Wasn't it? It's one of those quick plays where the puck came up from uh, Harry's left out to Dick Duff, and he took a backhander high and for that uh, upper corner, and it was labeled, but Lum got over, took it off the chest, and then it went up into the face. Just before that, I thought that uh, Lumley made perhaps one of the key saves of the game, didn't you? Definitely so. He come up with a real, real big save, and uh, he's been doing that the whole series. All the games I've seen, all the games I've heard about, he's been doing just that. He's the Lum Harry Lumley of old, let's put it that way. That's right. Well, you were a teammate of his for a good many years. He's still a great goaltender, isn't he? Yes, and he held us in fat in our pocketbook in the earlier parts of my career, too. That's right. You had a rough time this year, though, eh? Uh, yes, when you speak of this year, you don't speak of any pocketbook. We're, uh, we lost out as far as prestige goes and money. We lost that, but uh, you can take our word for it. When I say our, I mean the Detroit organization that will be in there fighting not only for ourselves, but for our home fans next year. I know you well, uh, George. You, you play 100% all the time, and it seems rather strange to see the Detroit Red Wings out of the playoff picture because they've been in it for so many years, along with Canadians and Maple Leafs and the Boston Bruins. How do you think this game will go tonight? Well, it's hard to say. Toronto, of course, got the leg. Boston's got the injury, although that offsets by the fact that Boston are at home, and uh, these two clubs make a habit of playing in overtime, so I'd say I'd look forward to a real tight game. However, I, I can't really guess because the, every prediction I've made has <laughs> come out wrong, so I just better be quiet about okay. it all. Okay, we'll have uh, with us a little later on, uh, Gordy. And now here's Foster Hewitt with another guest. So well, my first guest here is Tom Foley, who has been uh, very close to the Canadian Chicago uh, series just over. Tom, uh, you've had a chance to uh, get acclimatized here in Boston. Uh, how does it compare with some of the play you saw in that Chicago Canadian series? Well, firstly, I feel a little neglected, Foster, because I've been here for a entire period plus two minutes and nobody's thrown a bunch of stuff at me and they, <laughs> they certainly did in Chicago. I don't think they were throwing it at me, but uh, they seem to have bad arms in Chicago in both baseball and hockey and they were <laughs> aiming at Red Story and uh, at Jock Plon and a few of them were hitting me. Uh, basically, I, the goaltenders haven't been as busy in the action I've seen so far tonight as they were in the Chicago Montreal series where it seemed to be a little more freewheeling and wide open and some five-man ganging attacks and quite a bit of pressure. Well, I think this game has been uh, different from any other in the series, as a matter of fact, in that respect, because certainly Lumley and Bauer have been sensational up until now, and of course they haven't been quite as busy, as you mentioned. I think the forwards and the defenses have taken over, more or less, in this game so far. Well, Lumley but, being a little busier than he would have liked to have been, I guess, with that save. That was a brilliant save that it, put him out. It sure was, but uh, you could see that it hit him right in the face. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know how he stayed in there as long as he did before he realized that he was hurt. I might say as far as this series is concerned, we both started on the 24th of last month. Uh, you haven't eliminated anybody yet, and we've eliminated one whole hockey club and one referee. So. <laughs> That's right. Well, uh, Eddie Powers, of course, as you know, is here taking the place of Red Story. And it was a very unusual and perhaps unfortunate situation, don't you think? Well, any time you lose a man like Red Story, it's certainly unfortunate. Uh, this was a rough night in Chicago, a tough night for any official, and uh, the crowd, I thought, was uh, a little bit inflamed right from the start. 
Well, as a matter of fact, Tom, if you stick around here for a little while longer, I think you'll find that a few things can be thrown here, <laughs> so don't be too worried about that. And now, back to Wes and Ed Chadwick. Here in our cramped quarters in the Boston Garden, our next guest is Maple Leaf goaltender Ed Chadwick. Ed, how do you feel? Oh, it's pretty tense up here, Wes. Uh, I shouldn't be playing. I bet yeah. you'd rather be down there in the net. Yeah, I can. I think I feel attention more than the boys do. I'll bet you do. Are you going to lose some weight up here, do you think? Oh, I won't lose any weight, but I'm going to lose a little sleep, maybe. That's about all. What do you think of the game so far? Well, it's been a good game, uh, Wes. Uh, the one that hit Lumley in the face there was going in the net, and it might have been a different story. But Lumley was in the way, so I hope they come from here in. Uh, Jordy Al and I were just talking about a save I thought that Lum made just about a minute before he got hit in the face with that puck. I thought it was a key save. On Dickie Duff. That's the yeah, one. He made a wonderful save there. He's made a great saves all through the series. I think he's been the big thing. If they had, uh, Lum wasn't so sharp, I think we would have been all over for us right now. I mean, he wouldn't be here in Boston that's tonight. That's right. We'd be well, in Montreal. Uh, that's right. It's trapped on uh, by the name of Johnny Bauer. He's doing a pretty good job at the other he end. He sure too. is. He sure is. He's playing wonderful for us. And how do you think the uh, game will go now? Well, I don't know. I, I just hope we're flying. No, I hope we're flying to Montreal. That's all I'll say. Well, I hope we'll win. To uh, leave right after the game? Yeah, it's either Toronto or Montreal. I hope it's Montreal. Okay. Now, uh, any uh, outstanding plays you might uh, pick out in the first period and uh, start of the second? Well, just uh, the one save that Lum made on the Dickey there in the start of the second was a beautiful save. And, I think there was a good fight there. I think Bobby Vaughn got a few good punches in there. Daisy had got a couple of uh, one punches in, though. He yeah, he had Harris, right. and Harris wasn't looking. That's right. Yeah. Harris was uh, turned the other way. All right, now uh, tell me, sitting up here in the stands, do you watch the goaltenders deeply, or do you watch the, the whole game as a whole? I watch the whole game, yeah. I watch the goalkeepers, too. Uh, West, these are two experienced goalkeepers, and maybe I can learn something from watching them. And uh, Mom's been around a long time, and Johnny's played a lot in the American League, and they're both professionals and both good goalkeepers. Maybe if I watch them closely, I might be able to learn something. I don't think you have to learn too much. Uh, I think it's just the luck of the draw that uh, Johnny's down there and uh, not you. We're glad to see Johnny doing a great job. I know if you get the opportunity and get in there too, Ed, that you will also uh, do a, a tremendous job. What did you think of the uh, Canadian Chicago series? Did it go the way you thought it might go? Yes, I thought uh, the Canadians would win it, but uh, I thought it might only go five games, but I was out by one. I won uh, last Saturday night. It was quite a game. I got home in time to watch it about the last five minutes. It's quite rugged in Chicago, I'll tell you. Do you think that the, uh, did you think that the Leafs would uh, uh, stretch this to seven games after they had lost the first two? No, I thought maybe that uh, we would go. I thought it would go seven, but I thought that when we got up there at three that we would end it last Saturday. But uh, just to break the game, uh, we came back from two goal deficits every time, and I thought maybe that well, since we didn't have it, we'd win, probably win in overtime, but it didn't go that way for us. Did you think that the Leafs played as well Saturday night as they have in uh, some of the other games in no, this series? No, I don't think so, Wes. They, they didn't play a good game. They played a fair, uh, not a bad game, but if we were if we playing a good game, we would have won it, because we almost won it playing a bad game. That's right. I thought they let down sort of... Uh, momentarily in that uh, second period and the Bruins sort of took over for a time. That's yes, well, we got off to a bad start. They're up two goals on us, West, and we dug away until we got that back, then we let down again, we're up two more goals back, then we dug back, and by that time they got another one, and the time was running out on us, so. Well, uh, Harry Lumley now uh, is out getting uh, repairs. He'll be back in action very soon. How does it affect a uh, goalie when uh, he gets uh, shaken up like that, has to go in for stitches and then come back out in the ice? Well, it's pretty tough, Wes, but uh, I think uh, after the first shot on Harry, he'll be all right again. Uh, I don't know. Don't worry about the got him. I think it's around the bottom lip there somewhere, but I think he'll be all right. Okay. Thanks a lot, Ed Chadwick. And now here's Foster with another guest. Thank you, Wes. Well, uh, my next guest... As a real old-timer in a hockey way, Johnny Gagnon of the Montreal Canadiens of more or less yesterday. Johnny, how many years does it go back when you played for the Canadiens with Howie Morenz and, uh, oh, right, yeah. and Joliet on the left wing, wasn't he? You were no, right wing. I was right wing. Uh, right. Howie was center and uh, Howard was left. That's right. That was a terrific line. Well, it, uh, that's what he'd say about it. Well, but, I should say it was. Now, that's going back quite a few years. Well, I started with them in 1930 and I finished with 1940. Well, now tell me, uh, are you still keeping your interest in hockey? Yes, uh, Foster, I'm uh, scouting for New York Rangers. Why, that's treason, isn't it? Well, <laughs> I'll tell you something. I'm very surprised to see you 
little for the playoff spot, but you know, you can't blame the, the, anybody else but the Rangers. I see. Well, now, have you been able to get your eyes on a few of those big ones that they're trying to pick up in the league? Well, first, I'm going to tell you about, about the hockey players today, you know, I mean, they just... You have to develop them just like Toronto is doing with a farm club, you know. I mean, if they uh, tend to be all right, good luck for New York Rangers. That's Same right. Toronto. Well, now tell me, uh, as, a, uh, as a scout, uh, do you find that the uh, players are, are scarce uh, or is, is the crop just as good as it used to be? No, I think they're scarce, Foster. You know why? Because uh, uh, too much hockey and... and uh, and uh, the, the kids today, you know what I mean? They, you know, they don't want to play hockey, I think. They want, they want education. And, uh, and after that, they get education. If they're not good enough to play, uh, to play hockey in a big league, they go for education. Of course, uh, I think there are many counter-attractions, and uh, uh, that possibly, the way we live today, with so many extras and things, that takes away from uh, youngsters' interest, don't you think? That's right, Foster. But uh, uh, on this uh, hockey subject now, uh, what do you think of this, uh, the first two periods so far? We haven't had much of the second period yet, but what do you think of it as a hockey game so far? Well, uh, Foster, you know, I mean, I, I see Toronto play one this year, it was against New York, and uh, like I said tonight, I think it's everybody's game. You know, I mean, uh, it has gone, it's, the break is uh, any 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 shot. If it's a good shot, to get in there. It's going to be uh, for the, if it's for Bruins, it's going to it's going to be for the Bruins. It's going to be for Toronto. It's going to be for around Toronto. But it's so close. I can see who's going to win, and I don't care who's going to win because I'm neutral. <laughs> I see. Well, now that one that Lumley stopped, while it was unfortunate from uh, from for himself, of course, that he was injured, but he was rather fortunate to get in front of it, wasn't he? That's right, Foster, and he made a good stop. And the only thing is, Bauer made a good stop on the top of the knee on the breakaway. You remember that the, the first period, when Topper breakaway, the score was one nothing for the Bruins. And uh, and uh, and Tappersley break break all along with uh, with Bauer and Bauer and Bauer didn't make a stop but Tapper sh shoot wide to the net yeah. and if if if, if, if Tapper didn't score that if he scored that goal I think it's going to be tough for Toronto but you know I mean a hockey game today you have to put in the net to uh, win a ball game that's right well they're so evenly matched that uh, the tide could turn either way oh yeah that's everybody's game tonight you know I mean the one is going to make a mistake is going to pay for. Well, it seems to me, and watching the play uh, tonight in particular, the Leafs seem to be in better physical shape. Would you agree on that? Yes, and they're younger. I think they're younger in the Boston Bruins. And, uh, and uh, I never see Toronto say play, play uh, so hard because they prove it. And on the end of the season, when they come in and make the playoff, you have to be uh, pretty uh, strong and young and, and strong to... Uh, to make the playoff, and I think, you know, I mean, if they, I think if you beat the Bruins tonight, I think you're going to give Boston can, uh, can, uh, the Canadians a good, good yeah, battle. Oh, I think e either team that uh, happens to get by in this series is certainly not going to be any pushover, that's oh, for no. sure. Oh, no. And uh, do you think, as a matter of fact, that the Montreal Canadiens are as strong as they were last year? Uh, yes and no. You know what I mean? Uh, yes and no. Uh, that gives you two chances. Yeah, you know why? <laughs> yeah. They're just like the New York Yankees, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, they might get, can be beat. Uh, if you beat them because you have to pick it a hockey. Of course, I'm thinking more of the fact that Bellavo is out and uh, the Rocket. Now, they mo both may be in, and we hope they will be. But you can't possibly take two outstanding greats like that out of a lineup without weakening the team, can you? Well, you know... Uh, one thing about Morris, he didn't play. He didn't play for quite a while. I don't know if he's going to be in very good shape to uh, to uh, play against you guys if you've made it. Sam and and uh, and very well. But very well is only out for about a week. But but I'm going to tell you something. They got some good reserves, the Canadians. Since they got some good hockey players, you know what I mean. And you got a good young club. And, and you're going to give them a good battle, right? Oh, yes. Well, the Canadians have a lot of depth. There's no question about that. And uh, it'll be a great series regardless who gets in there. Don't well, you think so, Johnny? I'll tell you about, about Toronto. It surprised me. 
tonight, and I didn't see it before, the summoning game before, but it surprised me tonight. They look like champions. If they get beat, they're going to be, they're going to get beat like a champion. That's right. But we'll resume activities here in a few moments. Welcome warm weather that's coming means time for a thorough spring changeover, too. See your Imperial Esso dealer soon. Have him get your car ready for carefree summer driving. Always look to Imperial for the best. We're still waiting for Harry Lumley to reappear on the ice here in the Boston Garden. The Maple Leafs are out uh, practicing, shooting the puck at uh, Johnny Bauer just to keep him warmed up. And a few of the Boston Bruins have been skating. More of them have come on the ice now. And uh, we're keeping another chap very busy here too tonight in uh, Tom Foley, our Ottawa friend, who is the MC of the Hot Stove League down in Montreal for the Montreal Canadiens game. Tom was on the air with Foster at the other end of this long, narrow platform, and now he's up here with me. Tom, uh, any more comments to make? <laughs> well, I think the organist here may get one of the three stars because he's been going about 25 minutes, Wes. But I resent this being outnumbered by you Torontonians two to one. Uh, one at a time is tough enough, you know, but when you start throwing them at me two at a time, I think that's unfair. Well, the way the Rough Riders go uh, the last couple of years, it doesn't uh, matter, does it? <laughs> well, they sent five guys out to Regina for one quarterback, so I, <laughs> I guess maybe Ottawa's used to being outnumbered. What do you uh, rate uh, getting back to hockey now as the top stars in the game so far, Tom? Well, I would say Stasiak uh, has been so. the number one man. He scored the only Boston goal. He's been very strong out there. He's won both fights he's gotten into, at least uh, <laughs> on my score card. And I would say, secondly, uh, even though he hasn't been awfully busy, I'd have to go for Lum. Uh, you know, that, this is quite a story we're seeing uh, in Harry Lumley in this series. Here's a fellow that was pretty well written out of the major leagues of hockey, and he's back here uh, as one of the top stars in the semifinal. That's right. I think it uh, recalls the time that Tommy Gorman got uh, Alec Connell out of the <laughs> Fire Hall up in Ottawa, and uh, I know he beat the Maple Leafs in three straight games and went on to win the Stanley Cup for the Montreal Maroons. I also think that this delay could hurt the Leafs more than it hurts the Bruins. I notice the Leafs have been a little more jittery throughout uh, the well. We're close to a half hour now. They've all been up uh, skating around, moving around. Uh, they're younger and they want to get at them. It seems to me the Boston club has been just a little more relaxed and calm about the whole thing. Would you say that's perhaps because of the more experienced players on the Bruin line? Well, yes. They, they've been in it. Uh, they played the last couple of Stanley Cups and uh, they're older players, despite the fact that their goaltender is being stitched up. I think they take a thing like this a little more in their stride. I wonder uh, how it will affect Harry Lumley, who has been playing so tremendously, to uh, have this uh, slap in the in the face and have to get some stitches on it. And now uh, he was keyed up playing a terrific game before he went out. 
I wonder how that will affect the goaltender coming back. It can't help him too much, although uh, after he was hit, he stayed in the nets for at least another minute, and uh, he made another save before he finally left. I, again, I think he's a, quite an old pro, and it may also uh, react on the rest of the Boston club that they'll say we've got to get uh, out there and protect good old Lum because he stopped one with his teeth, and if we <laughs> keep the puck at the other end of the ice, that wouldn't happen. You know, that quite often happens when they feel a goaltender may be on the spot or when they have a rookie in there or a new goaltender. It uh, sometimes uh, it makes the team rise up to the occasion and come up with some great defensive yeah. play. I think any injury is liable to do that, Wes. I'm told that uh, the Boston club to a degree did that uh, last Saturday when they roared back after several injuries. Uh, Morrison was caught, uh, Tapazini was hurt. I think the Canadians did that in the series against Chicago when they lost Belly Bowl. Uh, certainly three or four of the Canadians played tremendous hockey, better hockey than they had been for the balance of the campaign and uh, more than made up for the loss of Big John. Particularly uh, Marcel Bonin. Well, uh, Bonin, of course, had been hot right from the start. He, every time he looked around, he was scoring another goal. But uh, Provo suddenly got hot and uh, started scoring goals. And I thought Harvey uh, became a tremendous take-charge guy. Now, he's never he bad. That's been. right. But he was exceptional in the last couple of three games against the Chicago Blackhawks. It's just possible that having Big John out of there, and they were saying that he was the key to the hockey club at that stage, made some of the others realize, well, we'll just have to pick up the slack. The great thing, though, when a team can lose players like Beliveau and Richard and still keep on winning and get into the <laughs> well, Stanley Cup the finals. They're, they're a pretty deep hockey club. Uh, I would say a good sound club going in against them uh, naturally would have a good chance, but I don't think there's another club in the league that could lose two goal scorers like that and still have a lot of power That's left. for sure. Thanks a lot, Tom Foley. And now here's Foster with another guest. Our next guest is Spiff Evans, the publicity director of Maple Leaf Gardens. Spiff, uh, I understand you were in the dressing room to see Lum. I understand he has seven stitches in his mouth. Uh, There's a very bad uh, cut up there, Foster. And gosh, uh, could the camera go up there with the Toronto Maple Leafs to see it up there? Yeah. Looks that's nice, doesn't it? Well, that's a long way up. <laughs> <laughs> Foster, uh, Lum has got a very bad cut over his mouth here. I would say about 10 to 15 stitches, and uh, he's a very sick fellow right now. That's right. Uh, do you think they uh, will be able to uh, carry on with Lumley, or do you think there'll be a change? The doctor couldn't uh, tell me uh, uh, at that time. It's been quite a long delay, of course. That's right. Well, now, uh, from a Maple Leaf standpoint, uh, you've been watching this Leaf Club uh, really blossom over the season. Uh, they've really uh, gone from boys to men in this uh, series. There's no question about that. And a great nucleus for a great team in the future. Uh, what about uh, the uh, players that have caught your eye so far in the uh, game at this stage? This uh, stage, Foster, I'm impressed with uh, Richard Duff. I call him Richard. He calls me Spencer. <laughs> a lot uh, of respect. That's right. Uh, I think uh, Richard Duff is going to score the winning goal. Uh, Big Frank Mahavlich, terrific. This Maple Leaf team is uh, is something that you can't put your finger on. Them, no. Foster, uh, uh, you've seen uh, hockey for a long, long time. But Foster. This is a club. It sure is. This well, now, is a club. that's right. Thanks, Spencer. And now, Wes and Roger Barry. Well, we're still waiting for Harry Lumley to make his appearance. We've been informed now that he has seven stitches in his upper lip as a result of uh, getting hit by that shot. And now we have with us one of the Boston hockey writers, Roger Barry. Roger, what do you think of the game up to now? Well, it looks like, uh, at this point, West, like it might be an endurance contest, not only on the part of the players, but maybe on the part of the fans and the rest of us as well. Uh, see, it's after 9.30 now. Uh, it looks like a long game at least. Even if it's uh, finished in regulation time. I would say. Here, uh, Harry Lumley now is making his appearance. And how do you think this game will go? I know how I hope it goes, West. I think it'll go all the way, right down to the last minute. Uh, beyond that... Who knows? Did you think this series, when it started, would go the full seven games? No, truthfully, I didn't. I thought the Bruins would win it in five at the most. 
The Leafs have been a surprising team even at the end of the season. They certainly have, and they deserve all the credit in the world for that finish. It was a wonderful finish, and they deserve uh, to be in the playoffs, and they've done a great job all the way through. And it could be anybody's game tonight here, Definitely. Too. Certainly could. That was a tremendous ovation there for Harry Lumley as he made his appearance on the ice. Harry's been playing well. He has, and I think he should stay around and run for mayor of Boston West <laughs> because I think he could be elected. He really goes over big with the people here. Well, it's quite a thing moving in for the injured Don Simmons that have come up with a great performance that he has made. Oh, yeah. Everybody likes those Cinderella stories, I think, Wes. And, uh, of course, Lum is a great one, uh, considering his age and everything else. And uh, to do the job he's done for the Bruins, uh, he's certainly uh, been a lifesaver for them for two years now. That's right. Last year he came uh, out and did a pretty good job for them, too. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, uh, Roger Barry. It's nice uh, having you with us. And now here's Foster and Bill Hewitt with a play-by-play -play of the second period. Right. Thanks, Roger. Lumley, who you see there going to the Nets, he's had a warm-up, received a tremendous ovation when he came out on the ice. He has seven stitches in his mouth. You perhaps can see the way his mouth is all puckered up there. From the cut, he uh, stopped a shot with his face. Now we have a fight going on up here somewhere behind us. They're breaking out at all stages. Fortunately, there hasn't been too much stuff pelted in this direction, but it's a lot of it's been thrown on the ice earlier in the game. And uh, but the game has been kept under control at all times. It's a hard game to handle, and so far, referee Eddie Powers has been doing a very good job. The teams are at the breaking point, of course, because of the tremendous importance of this seventh and final game in the series. The series stands, of course, three games apiece. Boston won the first two on Boston ice. Boston five, Toronto one. Then they won the second game four to two. Then they went back to Toronto, and the Leafs won two overtime games in succession by identical scores of three to two. Then came back to Boston and defeated the Boston Bruins 4-1. to one. Then with the Leafs having the odd game and only a one win necessary, the Bruins fought back in a free-scoring game and defeated the Toronto Maple Leafs on Toronto ice 5-4 to four in a torrid struggle. In fact, every game of this series has been hard fought right from beginning to end. And this game tonight, the seventh, is even more tense than any others in the series, just because, of course, that it means elimination for one team. Lumley, gamely, carrying on after this injury to his mouth. The Bruins have a number of casualties out there but they seem to be still taking their regular turn, and the Leafs have their share, too. And they're carrying on just as if nothing had happened. We've only played two minutes and 14 seconds of the second period. It's a 1-1 tie and a real battle if there ever was one. They're fighting it out here in Boston tonight, where it's cloudy and mild, but reasonably cool in the rink for the right to meet the Montreal Canadiens in the Stanley Cup Finals. Now they're getting ready for the face-off in the Boston zone to the right. Lumley has indicated that he's ready. Morrison is still setting out his misconduct penalty, but of course, there's substitution allowed. And so whether that long delay will hinder or help the two teams, it's very hard to say. But. Both teams have cooled out quite a bit from the tenseness of the first 10 minutes of the first period. And now for the play-by-play, -play, here's Bill Hewitt. On the face-off, it's McKinney in his own zone, clearing it to Flamin. Flamin ahead to Tapazzini, stopped by Stanley. Stanley and Tapazzini fight for it. The puck is shot back into the Boston zone again, and it's Moans to McKell. McKell. Trying to come out, stopped by Olmstead to Pulford. Pulford shoots. Lumley made the save on the short side. It comes back to Horton. Horton takes a shot. Pulford a drive. And the Bruins clear the puck into the corner. Slam it ahead to McKell. McKell, number eight, a quick pass to Tapazzini. And Stanley clears it back to the Boston defense. Flamin ridden off by Pulford. Puck was shot into the leaf zone. Goes to Olmstead. Olmstead in the 
the corner behind the net. A pass to Pulford. Pulford takes his shot wide. Lumley let it go to the side. Moans a quick pass ahead to Tapazini. Tapazini up with a pass to McKinney. Stopped by Armstrong of the Leafs. Armstrong gets over the line, number 10, shot wide. Duff let one go. Then Armstrong tried to center to Regan. Regan gets it back to Horton, a shot right in front of the net. Armstrong shot wide. McKell clears to the corner. It's cleared out to Tapazini. Tapazini coming down the ice, over the line with a shot, and Horton steps in and takes it. Horton over to Regan. Regan up at center with Armstrong. Regan takes his shot, and that hit a leg. Duff then steals the puck for the Leafs. Comes up to the Boston line, turned off stride. Still has it. Passes over to Armstrong. Armstrong shoots one off. Moans over to the far wing. Stasiak shot, and it deflected off Duff over the glass. Ever since they started in this second period, the Leafs have had a definite margin in the play. They've been crowding the Boston Bruins and not giving them that much elbow room to get out of their own zone. But it's a game that looks as if the breaks are going to decide it. It's that close. Armstrong of the Leafs takes the faceoff. And Regan is actually the centerman. Duff on the left, but because of Regan's injured hand, he plays on the wing just for the faceoffs. From the draw, puck is taken by Armstrong of Boston to Boyvin. Boyvin to Busick. The pass over to Stasiuk is kept in. Here's Duff's shot. That was wide. On the other side, Bond knocked the puck to Regan. Regan in the corner, trying to center it, is jammed against the boards. The puck is still loose, and they finally hold it. You notice they had their skates on it, but it was bouncing around on the blades, and therefore, any powers, the referee didn't blow his whistle until they finally got it against the boards. Regan has a mauve bandage on his right glove to help protect his broken hand. But despite this handicap, Regan has scored the Maple Leaf, only Maple Leaf goal. Bruins goal was scored by Stasia. Only two scoring plays, and they're at the 4.35 mark, the second period. On the faceoff, Bond to Harris. Back to Bond. Bond shot it around. It goes to Harris in the corner. He tried to center it out in front. Mahovlich over to Bond. Bond's shot goes to the opposite wing. Harris by to center it. Harris still has it. Coming in front. And he was knocked down. And McKell comes back for Boston. Up to the leaf line. Mahovlich ran into the Boston player. Mahovlich goes down the ice. Over the line. Still has the puck. Over to Brewer. Brewer shot. And it stopped in front. It comes back to Bond. He shot wide. Eamon right in front of the net. It comes back to Brewer. Brewer fakes the shot. Cleared it into the corner to Harris. Harris trying to center it. Too well covered. And Levine gets it. He stopped by Mahovlich, who shot wide. Eamon tries to keep it in, and the Bruins shoot the puck down the ice. Bond goes back for it. The Boston Bruins are hanging on desperately at this time. You'd almost think the Leafs had landed almost a haymaker and have them groggy on the ropes. The Bruins, with difficulty, get that puck out of, the, out of their own zone by shooting it down the ice finally. But they've been under continuous pressure since they started in this second period. And the Leafs are trying to keep pouring it on, trying to force this all-important break. It's a one-all tie. And the face-off rival goes behind the net. Pass off the boards to McKinney. McKinney to Moans. Moans misses a check from Pulford. Flamin comes up to the leaf line and over. He's crowded off by Horton. Olmstead clears it to the other wing. It's Rybo getting it to McKinney out in front of Tapazini, and he's fanned on his shot. Moans is bumped by Pulford. Then Olmstead gets the break at center. One man back. Olmstead fakes the shot. Still has it. Tried to pass it in front, and the Bruins come back. Rybo, Tapazini, and McKinney. 
McKinney. Mc Tapazzini shoots. Bauer caught that and held it for a face-off. A nice save by Bauer. The Bruins have suddenly taken a new lease on life here. And with Tapazzini, Rival and McKinney sparking them, they've started to roll the other way. That's just the way this game is going. First one team having an advantage and then the other. They've played six minutes and 25 seconds of the second period. A 1-1 tie. Stasiak from Morrison with Mahovlich off and Regan from Harrison Duff when Lumley had his penalty served by a Bruin player, Poliziani. Puck comes back to the blue line. Morrison's shot was stopped. Vaughn of the Leafs clears it out to Duff at center. Duff pokes the puck into the Boston zone, goes after it, centered it right in front. And it's Stasiak losing it to Regan. Regan in the corner, behind the net, was jammed into the boards, and the puck goes over the glass. They're setting it toward pace, going both ways. They're both trying for that big break. And the reserves are coming over the boards frequently. Frequently, Here's McCall, who took quite a bump on the last turn, returning to the ice. Face-off is in the Boston zone to the left. Armstrong, number 10, facing off with McKell of Boston. The puck is dropped. It goes back to the blue line. Vaughn took his shot wide of the corner. Regan faked the pass to the blue line, trying to center it out in front. Then McKell is bumped. Armstrong of the Leafs failed to stop McKell. McKell passed it out to center ice, and back goes Brewer for it as it slides back into the Leaf zone. Brewer... A long pass to Duff, stopped by Boyvin. Brewer of the Leafs tries it again. A roll pass to Regan. Regan goes over the line with Duff. Regan still has it. Back to Brewer, a shot. That hit the glass. Vaughn to Duff. Duff centered it out in front. Armstrong of the Leafs takes a backhand shot. Boyvin slapped it to the other side. Boyvin, number base, Vaughn, number 21, hit the post. Of it in time, it went off the post. That was the closest call of all when Lumley just got his foot in the way of that driving shot from Vaughn. But Regan just seemed to lift that line of Armstrong and Duff every time he gets out there. We understand that uh, Lumley had seven stitches in his mouth. He lost two teeth, one his own and a false one, which broke off and they had to pull it. A shot right on, hit the side of the net again. Harris trying to get it from Gendron. Rolls out and out to center ice. Stanley to Mahovlich. Mahovlich turns, comes over the line. Going around the defense, still has it. Back to Horton and it hopped over his stick and went down the ice. There's a race for the puck. Bauer came out of his net. The puck goes to Levine, a shot. Oh, he missed the open corner. And Harris to center ice. It's slamming to Gendron. Gendron's over the line, a shot. Bauer tipped that with his stick and it went over the glass. Bauer was nearly caught out of his net as he went after a puck to the, near the boards and in trying to clear it, it hit the Bruin player and they had a, quite a chance there before he could get in back in his net again. From the face-off, the Leafs have the draw. Harris starting to come out up the center where he's not the Leafs. Leafs then clear the puck back into the Leafs zone, and Horton has it. Horton gets away from Leach. Coming down the right wing with a pass to Eamon at center. It bounces past him, and Flamin gives it to Levine. It's stopped by Mahavlich, and he just failed to get away. Here's Eamon getting a chance with a shot that hit Flamin. Flamin then Moans is stopped by Harris, and they hold the puck at the side of the Boston goal. The ice is still in good shape, although there are a few wet spots starting to show up, particularly down to the left in the Maple Leaf end, where the freezing apparently isn't quite as good as at the other part of the rink. They're nearing the nine-minute mark, second period. Score is tied, 1-0. The puck is behind the Boston goal, and McKell, number eight. 
misses Pulford. A pass to Tapazini with McKinney. They're up over the line. Tapazini waits. He's checked by Pulford. Stewart off the boards to Pulford. Stopped by Boyman. McKell brought the puck in, but it went over the glass as he flipped at it. And that's a face-off. The two teams are at the full throttle now, and they're just almost at the breaking point. Score is tied, one all. Olmstead failed to get out. Brewer over to Bond. Bond just shot the puck to center. Boyven clearing it back, and Bond goes back for it. Bond of the Leafs kicks at the puck, holds it against the boards for a faceoff. Faceoff now in the Maple Leaf zone to the right. Score is tied, one all. Lining up for the faceoff. It's dropped, but Stewart was way offside. And they'll do it all over again. Referee Eddie Powers in the circle there. Linesman watching from the blue line. The puck rolls back to the blue line. Morrison's shot was stopped by Bond. Cleared out to Olmstead. He and Pulford over the line, and it's offside. As Pulford went in over the blue line in advance of the puck carrier. Pulford, Stewart, Olmstead, Bond, and Brewer. Now then, Horvath comes out with Stasiuk and Busick. Slammon is playing on the defense. And out comes Moans. From the face-off, Stasiuk brings the puck out to center. Shot it the rest of the way into the Maple Leaf zone, and Vaughn is back for it. Vaughn is stopped by Busick. They try to center it. Moans is stopped by Olmstead, and Pulford gets a break with Stewart. They're going over the line. Pulford fakes the shot, lets it go right on. Moans failed to clear it. Pulford tried to center it. Moans tried to get it out. Vaughn kept it in. Pulford being watched by Flamin. Stasiak is stopped. Puck is behind the Boston net. Moans has it. Cleared it off the boards to Stasiak. Out to Busick. Busick gets over the line. Is knocked off stride. Bond tried to get it out. Here's Horvath with Stasiak. They're going right in. And Horvath just failed to get to it. And the puck is shot down the ice by the Leafs. And it's going over the red line. A great try by Boston that just failed to click. This youth line is the most dangerous line the Bruins have out there tonight. With Stasiak running wild on that right wing, they pulled off another nice play there that was a close call for the Leafs. But Bauer came to the rescue. So 1-1 one, one tie as they near the 11-minute mark in this desperate struggle, the seventh and final game in the series. From the faceoff, Armstrong, Regan, and Duff start to head up to the blue line. They get to center. Armstrong tried to go through. Moan stopped him. Horton of the Leafs gets it over to Stanley. Stanley over the checkered line, lets the long shot go. It bounces right out in front of the net. And Flamin came back to cover up. Flamin a pass. Stopped by Regan. And it's offside. This Regan is and was slashed there, then Flamin start to bump one another. Flamin uh, and Armstrong, the Leaf captain, nearly had a set to there as Regan was slashed on his bad hand, and Armstrong took exception to it, and Regan was right there too. He's talking to Flamin now at close quarters. Reagan has added an awful lot of power to the Leaf line with Duff and Armstrong. He can skate, and he seems to have the happy knack of shaking loose an opening for his wings. But he was slashed there right on the arm, and that's what the rumpus started about. And so the Leafs make a change of players, which is good strategy to because they were getting a bit 
hot headed there, both teams. And the penalty at this stage of the game could be disastrous. From the face off, Levine gets a hold of that puck for the Bruins, rolls it out. Mahovlich of the Leafs misses a check from Boyvin. Morrison covers up for the Bruins, clears it out to Gendron. Gendron and Levine going down together. Levine's over the line, trying to get his shot. He stopped, gets it back. Harris of the Leafs comes up with it at center ice. Still has it. Gets over the line. Mahovlich over to even. He's going ready. He shoots. Oh, what a great save. Even shoots again. And a great save. Harris trying to center the puck, and they hold it for a faceoff. right in on top of Lumley twice. And Lumley stopped both shots from close in. It was just on the outside of the goal crease. So you can see how close it is. Score is tied, one all. Buck is behind the Boston goal and Tapazini's coming down the ice for Boston. To center ice, over the line, Harris broke it up. Ahead to Mahovlich, Mahovlich is spun around. And the Bruins lose it. Harris just failing to get loose. McKinney, a roll past the top of Zini. Brewer rolled it out. It was knocked down by a high stick. And play is called. Harris knocking the puck down with a high stick. They've played 12 minutes and nine seconds of this grueling second period. It's still a tie score, 1-1. Stasiak from Morrison at 1-11 of the first period. Regan from Harrison Duff at 5.33. Each goal was scored with the opposition shorthanded. Horton of the Leafs. Tried to get loose. McKell fell. Gets up, but Pulford of the Leafs stole the puck. Shot it into the Boston zone. Lumley comes out to stop it. Boyvin, a cleared pass. The Tapazzini failed to hang on to. It's Tapazzini in the corner. Just clearing it out to center. Horton of the Leafs. Gets the puck into the Boston zone. Morrison trying to get out. He's jammed into the boards and the puck goes to center. Horton's pass is intercepted by McKell. McKell to McKinney and McKinney just failed to get his shot. Puck is held against the boards in the Maple Leafs zone to the right. The reserves still coming over the boards. The Bruins the first to change. And now the Leafs. And they have seven minutes and five seconds remaining in this hard-fought second period of play. Each team shooting the works here to try to break this 1-1 tie. It's Pulford. Replaced by Regan. Vaughn is on the defense with Brewer, Armstrong, Regan, and Duff for the Leafs. Vaughn got the puck into the Boston zone. Number six is Horvath. Horvath of Boston ahead to Stasiuk way too far. As you can see, he was well over the blue line when the pass arrived. So they go back to the checkered line and on the Boston side. It's Horvath, Busick, and Stasiuk. Flamin and Moans facing Regan, Duff and Armstrong, Brewer and Bond. Flamin cleared the puck out, Horvath's pass, intercepted by Duff, who ran into Busick. Stasiak cleared a pass and went back to center. It's Busick up over the line, knocked off stride. Vaughn of the Leafs cleared the puck, but not out. A shot by Horvath goes to Brewer. Brewer of the Leafs, a cleared pass to Duff. Duff still has it. Coming out with a pass to Armstrong, back to Duff. He's closing in, goes to the corner, centered it out in front. It comes back to Brewer. Brewer over to Regan. Regan kicks the puck into the corner. Flamin is jammed in there. Regan trying to get it out. Arvath clears to Busick. Armstrong of the Leafs broke that up. Arvath clears a pass out to center ice. And the Leafs try to get it back. Busick knocked down by Armstrong. 
Regan of the Leafs comes back over the line, thinks it's good. Back to Armstrong, a shot. A nice save by Lovely. It's Brewer from the other side. A shot. Oh, that just deflected wide. And Lovely comes out of the net to cover up. The Leafs are coming closer and closer. That time, Armstrong deflected a shot, and it went right over the top of the net on the open side. Lovely was beaten on the drive, but it went right over the net. He just stands there, tired, but in there fighting, just like all the rest of them out there. Ready for the face-off. The puck is dropped. It goes to the boards. Cleared out. It's Boyman going in. Kenny 
Over the Leaf line, stopped by Mahovlich, and Horton has it. Horton back for the Leafs. Shoots the puck into the Boston zone. Boyman goes back for it. He's jammed into the boards by Harris, and Tapazzini has it. Tapazzini to Boyman. Boyman up at center, knocked down. Two players went down, and the puck goes back to the Boston defense. Aren't it's Morrison falling down, but McHale has it. McHale now up with a pass to McKinney, and Stanley gets it. Stanley over to Mahovlich. A pass, fifth fail to reach Harris, and Boyman gets it to McHale. McHale to McKinney. over the line, a drop pass for Stanley. Tapazzini breaks it up. A pass to McKenney on the right. McKenney passed it right in front to McHale. And he shot wide. The Leafs with Horton trying to knock it out. Tapazzini gets it. Shoots the puck back into the Maple Leaf zone. Stanley's back for it. Stanley off the boards to Mahovlich. He's checked. Mahovlich rolls it to the blue line. Stewart has it. Ahead to Pulford, two fire, and Flamin gets it. Flamin comes over the line with a pass, and it's offside. That goal by the Bruins, Boyvan, his first of the series, has given the Boston Bruins a tremendous lift, and they were flying, going in on the Leaf defense and pouring in on Bauer. The Leafs fighting, though, to hold them off at this stage after having the better of the early part of the period. From the faceoff, Horvath gets his shot. Power. Took that one off to the side. It comes back to Horvath again, a shot. And Brewer has it. Brewer still with it. Left it to Olmstead. Olmstead gets it out over the line. Music is bumped. And Horvath gets it. Horvath comes over the Leafs line, trying to get a shot. Too well covered, and Stewart of the Leafs comes down with Homestead over the line. Stewart's shot was stopped. Oh, Stewart tried to roll it in front, and Lumley covers up at the side of the net. The Leafs have had to withstand a tremendous drive by the rejuvenated Bruins since they scored that goal, Boyvan getting it unassisted. And they've had a few very close calls around that Maple Leaf net. That last play was the first time they've tested Lumley in about three minutes. They have three minutes to go in the second period. 2-1 for Boston. From the face-off, the puck is behind the Boston goal. Cleared out on the wing, the Bruins with Gendron. Flipping it down the ice, and Stanley goes back for it for the Leafs. Stanley. Ahead to Horton. Up to center. Horton goes over the line, and then he's knocked down. Regan over to Stanley. Stanley shoots the puck in around off the glass. Boyvan. Runs into Armstrong. Leach of the Bruins. Cleared it off on the board. Stanley stopped it, but Leach gets it. Leach ahead to Jedra, and the puck goes to the corner. He rolled it out in front. Levine to the Bruins, passing it to Leach. It's Levine, stopped by Armstrong of the Leafs, number 10. He hands it right back to Leach. Leach gets set with a shot, right on. They try to center it out in front, and Regan of the Leafs gets it. Dick handling out to center ice. Still has it. Back to Horton. Horton takes his shot. Steered by Lumley off to the side. Duff stolen from Levine, but Morrison takes it. Morrison, a pass. Stopped by Armstrong. And the Leafs, he's going in for the shot. Oh, a great save by Lumley on that shot. Puck is held against the boards for a faceoff. Armstrong of the Leafs, the Leafs captain, had that one labeled. He let a, a sizzler go at Lumley. It was a rising shot to the top right-hand corner, and Lumley played it perfectly. Bruins lead two to one. Greatly encouraged by that goal by Boyvan, and they have a minute and 32 seconds left in the second period. 
Huck is behind the Boston goal. McKenney back to McKell, who's behind the net. McKell slowly trying to get it out. Harris at the least blocks it. Harris to Eman. It goes to the corner. Harris tried to get a hold of it. McKenney of Boston has it. He's stopped by Mahovlich. Back to Brewer. Back to Harris. Harris comes up to the Boston line, and Flamin took it away from him. Flamin comes down for the Bruins over the line. A pass to Tapazzini, a shot went across the goal mount, and Mahovlich gets a break. The lead player going to center, up over the Boston line, still has it. Tried to pass it to Eman. Mahovlich cleared it behind the net. Harris was knocked into the mesh by Flamin, and Flamin gets it ahead to McKell. Two to one for the Bruins. McKell misses a body check. Mahovlich took it away from him. Eman knocks it loose. Gets the puck out to Mahovlich, over to Harris, and hopped off his stick. Harris ahead to Brewer. Brewer takes his shot. Lumley stopped it. Stewart right foot to Mahovlich. Mahovlich back to Brewer. His shot, that went high. Stewart is knocked into the net. The puck goes loose. They bang at it twice. And the Bruins get a hold of it. Ten seconds. Papazzini over the line. Chased over to the boards. Got it behind the leaf net. And Brewer gets it with two seconds left. Brewer got it down the ice. And Lumley stopped it as the bell goes to end the second period. It was a one-all tie at the end of the first period. Boyman unassisted at 14.33 of the second. The Boston Bruins now lead by a score of two to one. And so at the end of the second period, Boston 2, Toronto Maple Leafs 1. And this seventh game in the semifinal series between Boston Bruins and the Toronto Maple Leafs is being brought to you direct from Boston Garden by Imperial Essel dealers and agents from coast to coast in Canada. Well, right across Canada, the time has come to get ready for fine weather ahead. Now, your Imperial Esso dealer is ready now to change your car over to the summer lubricants it needs. And he'll do more than that. He'll give your car a thorough checkup from end to end while he's at it. He'll make sure everything's as it should be. So take your car in soon to your Imperial Esso dealer. When you drive out, you'll have the confidence of knowing that your car is ready and willing. You and your family can take to the open highway just as soon as the weather tempts you. More motorists than ever this year will be getting their changeover service at Imperial stations because they found out for themselves that you can always look to Imperial for the best. And now for our first guest in this first regular intermission, we have uh, Gordy Howe, the Detroit Red Wings star. Gordy, that was a terrific period of hockey. It sure was. I don't know if the boys can keep up that pace or not because it was uh, fantastic how they come out after Perry had received that engine. The boys are out there flying. They're really moving around that ice. I know. As a player, you watch, you know, it kind of makes you tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe that Harry lost one of his own teeth and a false tooth and had uh, seven stitches in the left, but he came up with a terrific, a terrific performance, didn't he? Oh, he always would. I'm glad. You know, I say I never go out on the end of the rope for uh, any predictions, but I just comment on the fact that earlier, if Lumley had any part of that lift left, he'd be out there, and I guess that's about it. He took a tremendous cut on the upper lip, required seven stitches, and also, he had to go through the agony of having a tooth full, something which I don't relish too much. <laughs> I don't think anybody does. But uh, I thought perhaps after he came back there, he held the, uh, the team up, and then they really turned it on. I guess they figured, well, if Lum's going to keep them out, we're going to go all out, and uh, they put up a terrific display after that. Oh, definitely. Well, the way I seen the game, and uh, actually everybody did, when they first come out, they're shooting everything they could at uh, Lum. And, Toronto had much the better the play, and then Lum held him in there, as you said, and it just seemed that the rest of Boston players caught fire then and there. As the period ended, they're definitely carrying the fat edge of the play here. Would you say perhaps the Bruins had an edge in that period? Uh, I really don't know. I, I forget what the shots on net were, but I will say one thing, that the Bruins had about seven real good chances, and so did Toronto. So I don't know. They, Especially in the first ten minutes, I thought, where Harry held them in, he kicked out about three or four sure goals. Well, it so often goes that way. The Leafs had plenty of chances there for a stretch of about two or three minutes. And when they don't get one, 
when they get all those opportunities, they don't keep coming, do they? Well, over the years, we found out, too, where you've had uh, a series of three or four real fine shots possibly knocking off a goal post. They could pos get possession, go right down scoring you. That's happened many, many a time. Well, that's the way it, uh, it worked there. Thanks a lot, uh, Gordy. We'll hear from you later. And out here is Foster Hewitt with another guest. Our first guest during this intermission is Eddie Shore, who is possibly Mr. Hockey himself. And uh, Eddie, uh, of course, uh, uh, you almost owned this Boston Garden, I know, a number of years ago. Uh, I recall seeing you play in many a playoff game here in which you just seemed to have the, uh, the fans just at your fingertips. Well, I was very fortunate and very lucky to be uh, uh, with the Bruins, and uh, possibly if I wasn't with them, I wouldn't have been with anybody. I likely wouldn't have been good enough. Well, now tell me, Eddie, uh, you are the president of the Springfield Club, I yes, understand. I know. Uh, what I'd like to know is that uh, uh, we know what caliber there is in the NHL. It's supposed to be the top, and I'm quite sure it is. Uh, how close is the gap between the NHL and the American League? Is it getting any closer as to player ability? Yes, I would say so. Uh, to prove the point is that boy Eamon that you have here with oh, Toronto. Yeah, I thought you'd come around to that. <laughs> uh, he's, uh, I would say, uh, as good as anybody on the ice tonight that I have seen. Maybe I'm a little prejudiced, but I don't think so. He's done a terrific job. and. Uh, in the stretch, uh, I think that uh, he was as much responsible for you folks getting in as uh, anybody else. He uh, came up with those tough, close game goals, and uh, those are the ones that paid off. He's been the trigger man, all yes, right. Yes, well, now he attributes you, uh, or gives you credit for this uh, snapshot that he's developed. Tell us, what is the secret? Well... Uh, if you watch his top hand, the secret of shooting, then whether you're a forward or a defense man, is your top hand. Most people turn the hand so that the back of the hand is facing uh, to the wall. It yeah. should be facing to the top. And if you watch Jerry, he, when he lets go, his hands are about like that. He's got all the power that any man can get and should have. And that is why he can let him go in a hurry. His both hands go together. The right hand just a slight bit faster than the... I'm right-handed, so it would be my right hand going just a slight faster forward than my left hand. And the puck is always back in line with him or just in front of his feet so that he is watching the buck out of the corner of his eye and can see the spots that he's going to shoot at. Most boys, unfortunately, look down when they're going to shoot instead of looking ahead. Mm -hmm. well, the goal he's country. been a good pupil anyway, Eddie. Thank, <laughs> Thank you so you. much for coming. Eddie Shore and now Wes McKnight. Thank you very much. And we have with us now the president of the National Hockey League, Clarence Campbell. Clarence, that was quite a period of hockey. That was really wonderful. That was first-class playoff hockey. Best, uh, you can't improve on that. That's right. As a matter of fact, both series have been tremendous, haven't they? Yes. Well, uh, this is the first game I've seen of this series. Oh, this I've series. been in the other series all the way along. Yes. Well, that was a great series. It was a very good series indeed. Now, I know you're uh, going to know what I'm going to ask you now. Uh, Red Story, uh, I understand, quit as an NHL referee uh, today. Would you tell us just uh, what it's all about? Well, uh... I guess he did quit. As far as I know, he certainly didn't uh, say anything to me about it, but apparently he called in a couple of newspaper men uh, sometime around noon today and told them that he was going to quit, and then sometime later uh, advised the referee in chief he was going home. So, what, Was he to a referee tonight's game? He was scheduled to work tonight's game, and we had, uh, we had a long session last night, or when I say a long session, uh, uh, an interview with him for, oh, I would say, upwards of an hour, all based on uh, his operating here tonight, next week, and from here on. Well, uh, if he does uh, stick to his decision to quit, it'll be a loss, one to the... No question staff. about that. It'll be a really serious loss to the staff, and uh, uh, I'll be very, very sorry if he decides to stick with his decision. So it might be only temporary then? Well, I haven't any idea. Of course, no. it's his decision, not mine. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, 
he didn't consult anybody. He didn't discuss it with anybody, uh, as far as I know. That is certainly nobody in an official position. And he just announced that he was uh, to the press that he was going to quit and uh, told the referee in chief he's going home. And that's all I know about it. So then you don't know why or anything else? Then? Well, only by what I read in the paper. Certainly, he uh, he uh, has made. Uh, I believe he made a pretty full statement. Was it become something that uh, you had said about him in a, in a press yes, interview? Yes, he did. He said, uh, he said that it was based on a lack of backing of support from the league and that he thought that uh, he, he was no condition to carry on under the circumstances. What will you do now uh, for referees? Will you continue with just the two of them for the remainder? Well, as far as I know, they are the persons that were selected to work in the series, and I assume they will. And we'll have we have uh, the other officials who are available standing by. But you'll have the old more or less alternate the two possibly in the finals. Is that it? Well, I uh, don't. I can't say right straight off, but I would think so. That's the only that's the only alternative that I know. Clarence, with those tremendous crowds in Chicago, I guess this has been one of the most successful playoff series so far. Oh, yes, uh, depending, of course, on the number of games, that's what influences. We have a normal, normally we have a, a about 15, 16 uh, games, and this time, of course, it, no matter what happens, it can't be less than 17, so uh, attendance-wise, uh, it might even match 1950 or 51, was it, when we went to 19 games. But, uh, of course, we, attendance has been tremendous. Isn't it nice to see Chicago back there with those 17,000 fans again? That's the tragedy of the affair, so far as I was concerned on Saturday night, was that uh, after all the effort that had been put into uh, building Chicago up to that stage, was that uh, it should end in a sort of a fiasco at the, to have the uh, season terminate there after such a uh, tremendous recovery, and uh, I really felt sick about it. I well, really that'll did. all be forgotten by the time next season opens well, up there. Well, uh, I sincerely hope so. Uh, all I, uh, I, I would been, uh, I would have felt much better about it if it, uh, if we could have gone uh, through the season or at least finished the season there in a good, in a. Uh, really uh, satisfactory uh, manner I, I don't care about I don't think the result mattered at all no but what I did think it was important that we uh, not uh, quit on the sour note okay thanks a lot that was Clarence Campbell the president of the NHL and now here's Foster with another guest my next guest is Bill Ezenicki who was a great hockey player very prominent in the body checking department and now Bill has uh, turned to golf. I, t I understand, uh, Bill, that uh, you made the uh, comment a while ago that you perhaps gave up hockey a little early. You uh, thought you might have had a few more years. Is that right? Well, I think I did, Foster. I had to choose between the two, and I, I perhaps did let hockey go just a little too soon. After watching the game tonight, it uh, would feel good to have the skates on again. Well, uh, what about the body checking department? Now, that's one thing you seem to hold down very well in the old days on the forward line. Uh, I haven't noticed too much body checking on the forward line tonight. Have you? No, not too much, Foster. The defensemen are certainly taking their men out, and the front are certainly uh, playing man-for-man -man hockey. But as far as uh, heavy body checking, there doesn't uh, uh, seem to be as much today. That's right. Well, now, as an old Maple Leaf fan and hockey player, of course, uh, what do you think of this Maple Leaf team, this edition this year? Well, I think it's a wonderful club. They're certainly skating, and they're they're very hungry players, hungry to win. I guess they're thrilled in playing in their first Stanley Cup playoff, uh, many of them, and they're certainly trying to do a job of uh, beating the Boston Bruins. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's certainly close, and that's... Uh, the breaks are going to decide it, that's for sure, don't you think? I think so, Foster. The, uh, actually, the uh, tide just seems to change when you think that the Boston team is hanging on the ropes. The, uh, the, uh, the, the Toronto team seemed to have the puck bounce the wrong way for them, and the Bruins surged back, and as a result, it, it proved to be a goal, and uh, that's been the difference. Oh, well, the game isn't over yet, no matter what happens. No, it's, uh, it's going to be a real third period. Foster. That's right. Thanks very much, Bill Azanicki. And now back to West McKnight. Now we have a pair of guests with us, the world figure skating champions, Barbara Wagner and Bob Paul of Toronto, who are here in the Boston Garden watching this game tonight. Barbara, how are you enjoying the game? I'm just weak. I'm so excited. Really and truly, it's wonderful. Just great. Bob, what are you doing here in Boston? We're skating at the uh, Ice Chips, Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's the uh, world's largest amateur show now in Boston. 
I believe I'm supposed to say that uh, through the cooperation of the Canadian Amateur uh, Figure Skating Association that you're allowed to be with us here tonight, but we want to thank them very, very much. Now, how are you enjoying the game? Really? Uh, oh, thrilled? well, I'm telling you, I've almost lost my voice. I don't know whether anyone can hear me right now, but um, for the first period, I was weak, and then when they got that second goal, I don't know what I'm going to do. I think well, that was the end. We just got to pick up now. That was. How do you like the crowd here in Boston? Wow. Fantastic, isn't really, it? Yeah. Really terrific. It's kind of pro-Boston, though, isn't it? <laughs> I would imagine so. But tell me one thing more. What, uh, you've had a, quite a tour of Europe, haven't you, recently? We just came back last Thursday, yes. Um, we were in Prague just after the hockey team left. We saw them one day before they left. And then uh, Warsaw, Budapest, Bratislava, Katowice, uh, Berlin. Berlin, Geneva, Paris, Paris, all around. Enjoy it, eh? Oh, wonderful. Oh, that's wonderful. Thanks very, very much, and we hope you uh, continue with the world's biggest skating champions for a good many more years. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Thanks. Barbara Wagner and Bob Paul. And now, here's Foster with another guest. My next guest is Ken Reardon of the Montreal Canadiens, uh, one of the executives now, one of the top brass, after being an outstanding Montreal Canadian player for years. Ken, how about some observations on the play so far? Well, honestly, Foster, I came to the game convinced that Boston would win, but after two periods, they're lucky to be ahead. I thought, uh, really, a good score should be Toronto about five and uh, Boston two. Toronto have been just overpowering Boston all night, but they can't score. Lumley has been tremendous. Uh, this third period should produce a lot of hockey, and frankly, I don't think the one goal can stand up for Boston the way they've played so far. No, the way they were working for that big break in that second period, it looked to me as if the Leafs were going to just literally push them right into the far end there for a while. Well, I'd like to save myself a long-distance phone call <laughs> right now and talk to the uh, Montreal Canadiens and the Toe Blake in particular, and Tell Toe, get ready, Toe, because whatever team comes out of this series, we're in for a tough battle. And uh, these are, uh, have been two good periods, but uh, Toronto are just overpowering them. Although they can't score, uh, it's hard to pick an individual star on Toronto because they're checking so well. They have smothered every Boston attack. That is, uh, they just uh, approach the Boston blue line, uh, the Toronto blue line, and they just disappear. The whole Toronto team is playing well, and uh, uh, to me, I, I still think Toronto's going to win the game. Well, it's a great game and a great series. I think uh, I, this is the first game I've seen in the series. I've read papers and heard comments from the experts that it was a good series, and I'll have to go along with it. The two periods that I've seen have been terrific. Thanks very much, Ken Reardon. We'll return in just a moment to Bill Hewitt with the play-by-play -play of the third period. You know, these days, a lot of motorists seem to be asking their dealers, how often should I change my oil? Every 1,000 miles, every 2,000, or even perhaps every 4,000? Well, the only answer to that question is, uh, it depends. It depends on the kind of driving you do and the conditions under which you drive. Now, most motorists, in fact, 60%, drive under average conditions. Now, that means mostly city driving with the usual number of stops and starts and uh, with an occasional run out on the highway. Now, for this average kind of driving, the oil should be changed every 1,000 miles. Under severe conditions, for instance, when you're driving most of the time on very dusty roads under extreme temperatures in winter, or in the city when you're continually stopping and starting, then it's wise to change your oil every 500 miles. Ideal conditions mean consistent long-distance highway travel with only occasional city motoring. And here you can afford a higher mileage between oil changes. Now, if you're in any doubt, play it safe. A more frequent oil change is a small premium to ensure the proper lubrication of a mighty big investment, your car's engine. And be sure, the next time you change, to try SO Extra Motor Oil, the new measure of confidence for modern high compression engines. It's the latest reason why you can always look to Imperial for the best. We're just uh, waiting for the teams and the officials 
The return to the ice. Here are the officials coming out now, led by Eddie Flowers, who is refereeing tonight's game. Even though in the order for the officials, Red Story was supposed to handle this game, but due to, due to the resignation ahead of the game, Eddie Powers was the next in line and took over. And incidentally, Eddie Powers has been handling an excellent game right through. It's been a hard one. In fact, in the first period, there were a couple of, there's one big fight and one near fight, and uh, situations that could have got out of hand, but they didn't. And it's been a very clean, even though it's hard checking, it's clean. And there seems to be the best spirit between these two teams in that they're giving everything they have. They're playing great hockey, the two of them. They're just about letter perfect at times on their passing plays, but the Bruins have cashed in on that big one when Boyvan went end to end for a sensational goal. The Leafs had more opportunities to score, but it's getting to be common practice for them to have to almost be twice as good in that department uh, to get out on even. Lumley getting a great hand as he returns to the ice. You recall he was injured when he stopped a shot with his mouth, had two teeth knocked out, one his own, and had seven stitches. Only one goal was scored in that second period. There were no penalties. Boyvan got the goal going end to end at 14.33. The Leafs outshot Boston again, 11 to seven. The Leafs outshot Boston in the first period, 10 to five. This is the seventh and deciding game in the series with the Boston Bruins now leading in this game, this crucial one, two to one. We're all ready for the third period, and here's Bill Hewitt. All set now for the faceoff as Harris, Mahovlich, Eman, Horton, and Stanley will face Mikel, Tapazini, and McKinney. All set for the faceoff. Armstrong is playing on the defense with Boyvin. Mahovlich turns for the pass to Stanley. Stanley comes straight up the ice to center. Shot the puck into the Boston zone. Boyvin nearly lost it in front of his own net, and McKell has it. McKell to Tapazzini to McKinney. Up over the leaf line. McKinney is ridden off. Eman a pass to Harris. He rolls the puck into the Boston zone, and Lumley stirred it off to the side. A clearing pass to Tapazzini, stopped by Harris. Armstrong rolls it out and down the ice, and Horton of the Leafs goes back for it. Horton to Eman. Stopped by McKinney. McKinney failed to keep the puck in. Horton lost it. The Bruins now with McKinney coming in on the left wing, still has it. Pass to Armstrong, Horton knocked it down, rolled it out to center ice, Boyman knocked it in, and Harris shot it out. Boyman clearing a pass to McKinney. McKinney rolls the puck back into the leaf zone as the Bruins play defensive hockey now, and Mahovlic goes back for it. Mahovlic on the right side, up to center, missed a check, shot the puck into the... Boston zone and Flamin has it. Flamin, a cleared pass out to Busick. Over to Stasiuk, stopped by Stanley. And Stanley of the Leafs. Pass to Duff. Duff failed to get out. Horvath over to Busick. Martin jammed the Boston player in against the boards. Armstrong of the Leafs has it. Ahead to Regan. Regan up with Duff over the line. And it was shot back out to center ice. Horvath with Busick. Horvath gets hit with a shot. Knocked down by Armstrong, who shot the puck out over the blue line to center. Score is 2-1 to one in favor of the Boston Bruins. And they come back over the line again. Stasiak took a shot. Stanley covered his man. Horvath trying to center it. He's bumped by Duff. Armstrong with the lead right in front to Stasiak. It hit Stanley and went back out to center ice. 
Bruins with Morrison clearing the puck in. Bauer made the save, shot it off to the side. Stanley tried to get away with Duff, and Regan's back for it. Regan watched by Stasiak. Regan still has it. Regan, a pass to Duff at center. He rolls the puck, shot the puck into the Boston zone. Boyman nearly lost it in front of his own net, and McKell has it. McKell to Tapazzini, to McKinney, up over the leaf line. McKinney is ridden off. Eman a pass to Harris. He rolls the puck into the Boston zone, and Lumley stirred it off to the side. A clearing pass to Tapazzini, stopped by Harris. Armstrong rolls it out and down the ice. And Horton of the Leafs goes back for it. Horton to Eman. Stopped by McKinney. McKinney failed to keep the puck in. Horton lost it. The Bruins now with McKinney coming in on the left wing. Still has it. Pass to Armstrong. Horton knocked it down. Roll it out to center ice. Boyman knocked it in and Harris shot it out. Boyman clearing a pass to McKinney. Kenny rolls the puck back into the lead zone as the Bruins play defensive hockey now, and Mahovlich goes back for it. Mahovlich on the right side, up the center, missed a check, shot the puck into the Boston zone, and Flamin has it. Flamin, a cleared pass out to Busick, over to Stasiak, stopped by Stanley, and Stanley of the Leafs. Pass to Duff. Duff failed to get out. Harvath over to Busick. Martin jammed the Boston player in against the boards. Armstrong of the Leafs has it. Ahead to Regan. Regan up with Duff over the line. And it was shot back out to center ice. Harvath with Busick. Harvath gets hit with a shot. Knocked down by Armstrong, who shot the puck out over the blue line to center. Score is 2-1 to one in favor of the Boston Bruins. And they come back over the line again. Stasiak took a shot. Stanley covered his man. Horvath trying to center it. He's bumped by Duff. Armstrong at the least passed it right in front to Stasiak. It hit Stanley and went back out to center ice. Bruins with Morrison clearing the puck in. Bauer made the save. Shot it off to the side. Stanley tried to get away with Duff. And Regan's back for it. Regan watched by Stasiak. Regan still has it. Regan, a pass to Duff at center. He rolls the puck into the Boston zone. Lumley stopping it for Levine. Now then Leach up to center ice. A pass to Gendron offside. As Levine went in on the right wing in advance of the puck carrier. We play two minutes and 57 seconds of the third period, and Boston lead two to one. Mario, Mario. The Boston Bruins seem to be playing a semi-defensive game, trying to make this one goal stand up. Buck is stopped by the Leafs defense, rolled out to center, it hops over Armstrong's stick, and Boyvin's back for it. He rolled it out. Brewer over to Barn. Vaughn takes a long shot after running into Boyvin. The puck is back in the Boston zone, and Levine ran into Pulford. It comes back to Vaughn. Vaughn takes his shot, and it was stopped by Armstrong. He failed to get it out. Olmstead goes after it with Levine. Levine goes behind the net, trying to come out, shot the puck out over the line. Vaughn waits, passes to Stewart, who's checked. Leach takes a long shot wide of the Leafs net. And Brewer tips it, but not out. A shot right on. Bauer left it for Brewer. And Brewer gets away from a check. Brewer, a long pass to Bond. Bond down the right side. He stopped. Buck is shot right back at the Leafs net. And Brewer of the Leafs tries it to Stewart. Back to Pulford. And he couldn't get past his own blue line. The Bruins checking fiercely and keeping the Leafs in their own end. Olmstead is knocked out of the play. Brewer then is checked. Brewer then runs into Levine and knocks him down. And it's Brewer of the Leafs. A 
cleared, pass to Olmstead, back to Stewart, stopped by Levine. Vaughn of the Leafs comes up to center, trying to get it over the line, is tipped back down the ice, a race for it. Brewer shot it, but not out. Levine keeps it in with a shot, and that was why. Stewart of the Leafs clears the puck behind his own goal. The Leafs are hemmed in their own end. Vaughn down the left wing to center, stopped by Tapazzini. Tapazzini's chase back. Stewart shot the puck around behind the Boston goal, and Morrison has it. Morrison roll it to the line. Stanley trying to keep it in, he does, and they hold it against the boards for a faceoff. The Maple Leafs seem to sag a bit there under terrific checking from the Boston Bruins, who seem to be able to keep them in their own end quite a bit. It's really tense, close, hard fought, but clean. Two to one the score in favor of Boston at the 5-0-3 mark of the third period. Apazini's knocked down by Harris. The puck goes to the corner on the opposite side. Cleared out to Flamin. Flamin to McKell. Stopped by Horton. Horton runs the Boston player into the boards, and Eamon takes it. Eamon. A pass to Mahavlich. Mahavlich gets it, but it's offside. Faceoff comes back inside the Maple Leaf blue line. There hasn't been a penalty called, and not any reason for one, since 1829 of the first period. Barry Cullen is going on the ice for the first time in the series. He's taking his place on right wing now with Harris at center, Mahavlich on the left wing. Two to one for Boston at the five and a half mark, minute mark, third period. Puck was shot off the boards to center. Cleared back into the Maple Leafs. So Mahabalic ran into Moans. Puck goes out to center. Harris shoots the puck into the Boston zone. Barry Cullen stopped Moans. Centered it right in front to Harris. It goes back to Barry Cullen again. He tried to center it, and back come the Brewers. It's over the line for McKell. McKell trying to go in, a pass to McKinney, shoot. And a great save, and Barry Cullen has it. Barry Cullen to Harris. Over the line. Harris roll it in front, and it goes to the wing. McKinney passing it out to Tapazzini. It slides to center. Stanley back to Harris. Harris shoots the puck into the Boston zone. Mahomelich went after it. Took Flamin into the boards. Tapazzini bumped by Harris, trying to get the puck loose. McKell is checked by Barry Cullen. Barry Cullen let it go through Harris behind the net, cleared over to the boards, and McKinney rolls it down the ice, and it's going right on the net. Stanley trying to work his way out with a pass to Duff. Duff failed to get it in. Morrison comes back for Boston, takes a long shot, stopped by Bauer, and it's cleared to Duff in the corner. Busick stops that. Busick, number nine, getting in front with a shot. That was wide. Another shot. Went to the corner. It's poked back to Stasiak to Morrison, a shot. It's still loose. Stasiak right in front of the net. Martin steered that off to the side. Horvath is draped along the boards. Barry Cullen holds it. Then Regan gets it. Regan gets it out over the line. Stasiak brings it back with Busick. Busick turning around. A pass intercepted by Horton. Horton comes straight up the ice over the line. Makes a shot. Goes to the corner. Tried to center it out in front. And Horvath gets it ahead to Stasiak, who rolled it out. Regan was checked. Armstrong of the Leafs has it. To Regan. To Duff. He's over the line with Armstrong, and Armstrong just missed the pass. Armstrong tried to center it, and Horvath gets it. Horvath starts down the ice for Boston. Gets by Duff to center. Takes a long flip shot wide, and Regan's back for it. Now then, Regan leads the attack up to center. Still has it. Lamont is knocked down. Then Brewer ran into Leach. Regan gets away from Levine. A flip past Armstrong. Leach stopped by Brewer. Brewer's over the line. Boston clear it out. Wolford gets on the forward line. 
And Pulford's back for it. Pulford coming out to center right with Olmstead. A long shot, right on. Lumley came after the rebound. Score! Pulford ties it up. Pulford went flying in there a mile a minute and got the rebound. Lumley made a desperate effort to cover up, but that leaf drive was relentless at times. And it finally paid up, paid off, and it's now a two-all tie. The Bruins have scored first on two occasions. They, they got the first goal. The Leafs tied it up. Bruins got the goal to put them up, and they are tie again. scoring for the Maple Leafs. That goal by Pulford, as Boyvins, was unassisted. He went right down. That time, he got the rebound and tied it up for the Maple Leafs. Just the kind of a game it is. Huck goes over to the far wing. Vaughn of the Leafs comes to center. Takes a long shot. That's wide. Pulford goes after it. Flamin is knocked into the boards. Took Pulford with him. And Gendron is stopped by Brewer. Brewer gets it for the Maple Leafs. With Olmstead, who takes the pass from Pulford, he rolls it right back into the Boston zone, and it's Moans back for it. Moans coming straight up the ice to center, handed it to Stewart of the Leafs, who flipped it off the boards. Olmstead tried a pass intended for Pulford. Leach held it long enough in his glove for a faceoff. We've played nine minutes. 29 seconds of the third period. The score is tied to all. That goal by Pulford was Pulford's third goal of the series. And it's a two-all tie after nine minutes and approximately 28 seconds of this third period. It's just a desperately fought game here. This is a seventh and deciding game. And they're extremely close. I'm the face-off. The Leafs with Horton coming up to center. Tried to roll it through. Boyman gets a break. One man back. Boyman trying to get his shot. He did. It was wide. The Leafs hemmed in their own end. McKell took Eamon against the boards along with Stanley and Mahovlich covering McKell. And we have a faceoff in the Maple Leafs on to the left. The Boston goals have been scored by Stasiuk and Boyvan, and the Maple Leaf goals by Regan and Pulford. All set for the face-off. The puck is dropped. It comes back to Tapazini's shot, but right over top of the Maple Leaf net. Tapazini cleared it back to Boyvan at the blue line. It rolls around behind the Maple Leaf net, and Stanley has it. Stanley to Mahovlich. Mahovlich goes to center with Harris. Over the line, Mahovlich going right in. And he left it there. Harris trying to get a shot right in front of Eamon. Eamon shoots. It's knocked down. And the Bruins get a break. A pass to McKinney. He's got a big break. He's going to shoot. Oh, and Bauer made a sensational save on McKinney, who was right in. That is possibly the key save in the game by Johnny Bauer when McKinney went right in alone on him. He seemed to have plenty of time to figure out what he was going to do. Bauer made him make the move first and blocked the shot. That was a sensational play all round. Faceoff is in the Maple Leaf zone to the right, and they didn't drop the puck fairly, so they'll do it over again. Score is tied to all. Nine minutes and 43 seconds remaining in regulation time. From the face-off, the score is tied to all. Brewer gets it ahead to Duff. Duff to Regan. Regan up with Armstrong and Duff. Back to Duff. Duff tried to go around Flamin. Regan keeps the puck in. Tried to roll it in front. They did. Lumley made the save. Stasiuk is checked by Armstrong, but gets it out. To the blue line, Regan checked him. Stasiak turns again. Stasiak ran into Busick. Has the puck for the Bruins. A pass to Flamin. Back to Stasiak. Up to the lead.
lead line back to Busick, and Busick shot the puck back to center ice. Busick still has it. Regan had him covered. Busick gets over the line, trying to go around Vaughn. Still has it, passed it in front. It comes back to Flavin. There's a shot right on. Harvath did rebound. Bauer went after it. They fight for it, and Bauer's got it in the goal crease. Well, there was a wild scramble there around the Maple Leaf goal as the Leafs were having difficulty in getting that puck close enough to Johnny Bauer to grab it. He finally did, but it was close. He's just cooling out a bit after that session, as you see. Score is tied 2 all on a face-off. And the Maple Leaf zone to the left, number 24 in the light jersey is Leach of the Bruins, facing off with Stanley, number 26 of the Maple Leafs. The puck is dropped. Pulford comes out with it. Pulford straight up the ice to center. Trying to go through the defense. Got as far as Boyvan, who covered him. And Levine comes back over the line. He's checked, and the puck went back to center. Leach is then jammed into the boards by Pulford, and Olmstead takes a long shot, and it's offside as Stewart went in quickly on the right side ahead of the pass. At this stage, the Leafs seem to have a slight edge in legs, if nothing else, but it's just first one team having an advantage and then the other. Eight minutes and 17 seconds left in regulation time. The score is tied to all, and it's Horton flipping it into the Boston zone, Labine. Shot the puck around on the boards to Gender, and it comes back to Horton. Horton takes his shot off Leach, and it deflects into the crowd, and there will be a face-off in Boston territory. The air just seems to be electrified here in the Boston Garden, and oddly enough, there's a, a strange silence that's come over the crowd. I think many of them are almost afraid to look. The puck comes back to Horton, the shot. Knocked down by Boyman. Boyman races down the ice to center. Up over the lead line, a pass to Gendron. And Gendron tried to center it. He does, and Stanley of the Leafs gets it. Ahead to Olmstead. Olmstead takes a shot. Boyman stopped it. Stewart waits for Pulford to get onside. And then shot the puck into the Boston zone. Morrison cleared the puck. It bounced to Gendron. Gendron comes out down to the Leaf blue line. He takes his shot. Horton stopped that, lost it. The puck goes behind the Leaf goal and over into the corner for Pulford. Pulford misses a check from Leach. A long pass intended for Stewart. Pulford stole the puck and just failed to get in. As Morrison covered up. Back comes Morrison of Boston, number 10. Trying to go around, Stanley has him covered, fell, and Eamon gets it. Ahead to Harris with Mahovlich. They're over the line. Back to Mahovlich. He's going right in. He passed it out in front. Here's Mahovlich getting set. He shoots. Oh, and he missed the corner with a backhand. Vaughn took a shot, and it deflects all the way out to center ice. Brewer, a long pass. Stopped by Boyvan, who rolled it out. Now then, the Bruins come over the line. It's offside as McKell went over the blue line in advance of Tapasini, who had the puck. They're very anxious to get that extra jump as they go over that blue line. And McKinney there went over on the left side to nullify the rush. It's a two-all tie, less than seven minutes remaining to regulation time. Puck comes back to Brewer. Brewer over to Bond, ahead to Harris. Back to Vaughn. Vaughn tried to shoot it over the line. It's stopped by McKell. Eman, a pass to Mahovlich. Up over the line, Mahovlich took his shot as Flamin went down. Brewer then ran into Flamin. Harris tried to dig the puck out. He did, but Moans covers up. Moans. A pass to Flamin. Flamin's pass goes out to center ice, and Vaughn of the Leafs traps it. Rolled it back over the line. Moans. A pass to McKell. McKell being watched by Eman. Chased over to the right side. Skated off. Chased into 
the boards. Tapazini rolls it back to the line. Flamin shot knocked down by Brewer. He flips it to Eman to Harris. Eman gets it again out to Harris. And Mahovlich is replaced by Duff. It's McKell. A pass to Tapazini. Back to McKell. Over to Boyvin. Boyvin gets over the line. Ran into Bond. And Duff gets it to Brewer. Brewer coming down the ice to center. Ran into Stasiak. And Busick over the line. Trying to get his shot. And Armstrong of the Leafs leaves it for Duff. Duff is head knocked down by Boyvin. And the puck goes into the Boston zone. Stasiak, Horvath going after it. And Morrison is checked by Duff. But Morrison gets it. Morrison coming up for the pass. Over the line to Busick. Got by Regan. And it's cleared out to Duff. Duff and Regan fail to get anywhere. Stasiak and Horvath. Horvath's shot was caught by Bauer. And he held it for a faceoff. Moan's knee seems to have gone on him. He just limped off on that last turn and they immediately went to work on his knee. Seemed to get it wrenched a bit. Two lead players, Duff and Brewer, took terrific body checks there at center ice. Still tied 2-2, less than five minutes remaining of regulation time. And each team looking for that big break. it fairly, so we'll do it again. And the Bruins were making a change. Boyvan got on, went off, and then's coming on again. He's played a sensational game for the Bruins. In fact, every player on the two teams has been a star in this game. Score is tied to all. Four minutes and 34 seconds left. The puck was... Not dropped fairly. Hofer jumping into the circle. All set for the face-off again. Pulford facing off with Horvath, and Pulford got the draw back to Stanley. Stanley, a flip pass ahead to Olmstead. Olmstead rolled it out to Stewart, to Pulford. Pulford is knocked down, and the Bruins get possession. Horvath ahead to Busick, stopped by Horton. Horton of the Leafs, cleared pass to Pulford. He was bumped by Flamin. Boyman over to Stasiak. Stasiak closed in with a shot. That was wide. Busick left it at the defense. It rolls out, and Pulford has a break. One man back. Pulford closes in, fakes the shot, lets it go. into the lead zone, and Bauer leaves it for Olmstead. Olmstead is checked. Harden of the Leafs gets it. Harden gets it out over the line. Morrison had it in a skate. Comes back over the line. It's tipped out. Tapazini pass to an open wing, and the puck is shot right back into the Maple Leaf zone. And Stanley has it. Stanley coming up slowly for the Leafs. A pass to Horton. Horton races up to center. Takes his long shot. And that hit a stick and went to the corner. Puck is in the corner for the Bruins. Score is tied to all. Flamin trying to get it out. A pass to McKell. McKell up to center. A roll pass knocked down by Brewer. Brewer goes into the corner. Still has the puck. Goes behind the net, gets out in front, trying to get a shot, gets it back to Vaughn. Vaughn's shot is knocked down, and the Bruins bring it out. It's McKell, a pass to McKinney, and it just failed to click. It's Mahavlis coming down alone, going over the line, a pass to Eman. He shoots, he scores! Eman scores for the Leafs. Eman picked the bottom right-hand corner, and the Leafs lead 3-2. There's the old trigger man in there for the Leafs on a pass from Mahovlich. And
and, Ma and Eamon with a perfect shot to the bottom corner gives the Maple Leafs the lead for the first time in the game. It was the Bruins starting off. The Leafs came back, tied it up. The Bruins take, took the lead in the second period, and the Leafs have scored two goals in this third period. Pulford tying it at 8.36, and they have about two minutes and 32 seconds remaining. We'll get the official time in just a moment. Seventeen is the time when the Bruins are back in their own zone. Bruins trying to get back. There's going to be a tripping penalty to Regan. Back up to center, Morrison goes over the line, and there's a penalty to Regan of the Leafs. There hasn't been a penalty called since the first period, and there's a break. As Eamon is going to get a penalty, uh, rather uh, Regan for tripping. That goal was scored by Eamon at 17:27. Mahovlich and Brewer getting assists. Now this will give the Boston team their break and opportunity to tie it up. Two minutes tripping. Time 17:42. There's all kinds of drama in this game. 17.42 is the time in third period here of regulation time. Toronto Maple Leafs leading 3-2. But now they're a man short. Pulford and Stewart will try to kill off the penalty with Horton and Stanley. I'll sit for the face-off now with inside Maple Leafs territory. Pulford shot the puck down the ice. Right from the draw, and McKell goes back for it. McKell is playing on the defense with Morrison. Stewart has McKell covered. Here's Pulford stealing the puck a shot, and that was wide. Stewart from the other side, holding the puck against the boards. It goes loose to Horvath, and we have two minutes left. Horvath is knocked down by Stewart. And McKell gets the puck out, and Harden stops it and shoots it back. Coming up for the Bruins, up to center ice, a pass to Stasiak, goes into the corner, Stanley rolled it but not out, here the Bruins with Stasiak trying to center it, it comes back to Horvath, a shot right in front, they knock it off to the side and Pulford gets it into the corner and shoots the puck down the ice. One minute and 18 seconds left, three to two for the Maple Leafs. As Busick comes racing up the ice, over the line with Stasiak. Stanley stopped him, tried to knock it off to the side. He does, gets an opening and shoots it out. Boyvin clears it back to McKell. He knocks it back to Boyvin. One minute to play in the game. One minute. One minute left as the Bruins close in again. A pass in front, a shot. Knocked down by Horton. Horton shoots it to the blue line. It doesn't go out. Knocked it to the side again. It's out in front to Horvath. Horvath takes a shot right in front of the stage again. They made it three, four times, and Brewer's got it. Bowers got it. There was a sensational play around the Maple Leaf net. Lumley has gone to the bench, so they have about 37 seconds left. Stanley is lying on the ice, apparently hurt on that play. That's Stanley lying there, but he's getting up slowly. It was quite a pileup. Lumley is out of the Boston goal. Stanley is being called to the bench by Punch Emlick. 37 seconds remaining. Brewer is standing up in the penalty box. The Leafs are still a man short and trying to hang on desperately. They lead 3-2 to two over the Boston Bruins in one of those titanic struggles. The Boston net is empty. The Leafs are coming over to the bench here. Johnny Bauer, there's the empty net at the Boston end. Then the Leaf players are gathered around Punch Imlick, who has been guiding them in terrific style. 
They're ready for this all-important face-off in the Maple Leaf zone. McKenney will face off. The Leafs are still a man short. Brewer is in the box, and Lumley is out of the net. Now, rather, Regan is in the penalty box. Regan is the player that had the tripping penalty. Stanley and Horton on the Leaf defense for the moment, but the Leafs haven't decided just who to have out there. Stewart is going over to find out how long Regan has in his penalty. It's almost impossible to tell by the clocks. Seemed about 10 seconds as far as the linesman was indicating there, so it's, but that isn't official. The Bruins have six forwards inside the Leaf blue line as Lumley has been taken out. All set now for the important face-off in the Maple Leafs zone. They're lining up. The Bruins have six attackers. The Leafs are playing a man short. The Bruins are using six attackers with the goalkeeper out. Lutley is over sitting on the bench. Seventh game. Stanley Cup semifinals and the Leafs leading three to two. All set for the face-off in the Maple Leaf zone. Wolford got the draw and cleared it out and down the ice. And it's going over the red line. Back to touch it is Hillman. But the Leafs are a man short, so a play can go right on. McKinney goes back for it. 18 seconds. McKinney, a clearing pass out to center ice. Stewart tried to stop his man. The Bruins clear it in. And Stanley shooting it around on the boards. The Leafs try to get it out. Stanley flips it down the ice. There's eight seconds as Regan goes after it. Horvath goes into the corner. The puck goes behind the net. Two seconds left into the corner. The bell goes. The game is over. And the Maple Leafs rush over to Bauer. Larry is being mobbed as the Maple Leafs go into the Stanley Cup Finals after a sensational effort here. The Bruins are leaving the ice exhausted. A great hockey team. It's really unfortunate these two teams can't win because it's a heartbreaker to lose, a glorious game to win, and the Leaf players jubilant are being applauded by a very sportsmanlike crowd in Boston. Punch Himlick is out there with his team. You see him there without his topee. Everything, he's a happy man, and now he walks out there like the champ. The Leafs are leaving the ice, three to two, the final score. In just a moment, we'll have the summary in the three-star selection. Once again, the final score of the Toronto Maple Leafs three.